Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Gareth Neville. I head up new business and data activation at Hitwise. Charlotte Plusto is our um, publishing, publisher focusing um, customer success manager. Um, I can kind of see some of our clients in the room, and then obviously some new faces as well. For those of you who don't know about Hitwise, um, do you want to? Do that, thank you. Um, we've been around for a long time, 20 years. Um, essentially what we do is we answer clients' questions. Um, clients come to us because they want to understand the behavior on their site versus the behavior on their competitor's site and get a deeper understanding of online behavior, where their, custom, where their customers uh, and readers come from, where they go, how do they differ to the competition. Um, and this is obviously from, from sort of quite, uh, high level yearly trends to go right into quite granular level hourly trends as well. Um, and then from a publisher's perspective, going from the homepage, tracking audience at, a, at an article level and understanding that audience and how that audience differs. Um, and essentially kind of giving you currency for your articles. Um, in terms of publishing clients, they're kind of using us mainly for strategic insight, editorial insight, and commercial insight. So measure against the competition and, and um, look at those growth opportunities. Um, editorial insight is understanding the difference between your evergreen audience, your event audience, um, as well as your, your kind of audience-based content. Uh, and then commercial insight to better inform your commercial efforts uh, and prove that success. This is the bit I am going to have to read because I want to make sure I get it right because it kind of sets the scene for the slides to come. So we've collated 500 plus consumer magazines filtered from the Hitwise top 100 sites in the news and media category. These include paid for print and paid for online subscription magazines. We've then categorized them into the key areas, entertainment, lifestyle, fashion and beauty, technology, sports and motors, food and health, um, and business and politics. In order to draw insights around how categories perform and the audiences behind said categories. The data in this presentation shows all online activity, including visits to magazine's homepage, articles, and your subscribe pages as well. Uh, the data doesn't differentiate if content was consumed behind a paywall or if the reader is a subscriber. Just want to say that. Um, so we're essentially what we're doing here is providing a macro level view um, of how a visitor consumes content, the audience demographic, uh, the competition, and how, of course, it differs to print audiences. So, thank you. Yes, please. Thanks, Thanks Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, one sec. So today's agenda. Um, online industry trends, right? Okay, so overall industry and by category we're going to be diving into. We're going to be looking at audience trends, um, the demographics behind these audiences and the search trends behind these. Um, and then we'll be wrapping up with key takeaways and giving you some, hopefully some actionable insight that you can use for the Keen Beans later today or tomorrow. Thank you. So online industry trends. Um, we're going to look now about how to acquire new customers at scale. Um, essentially, it comes down to understanding the needs and the motivations of those potential customers at quite a granular level. Um, let's take you through the data. I'll pass you over to Charlotte. Thank, Thank you. you. So the first thing that we want to look at is taking that 500 plus um, titles, those magazine titles, and kind of just benchmark it across the previous two years. So what we've got here is the lighter line that you can see at the bottom is the magazine industry, so those 500 plus that Gareth just went through. And we're just comparing it to the free news sites. So these are the top 30 free news sites. So that will include things like the BBC News, The Guardian, <coughs> The Sun, etc. So the first thing to pull out here, I think, is the magazine industry is smaller in terms of size. So this is looking at visits to those magazine titles. But when we go through the year-on-year -year growth, we can see that the magazine industry is actually consistently growing between 9 and 10%, especially, as you can see right at the end there, so just past July 18, we've seen a massive spike in the last month. So that actually accounts for 118 million visits to those top 500 magazine titles. So the key takeaway from this slide, I think, is... Although the magazine industry is smaller than those freeze news sites, we can see that there is actual growth um, for the industry and it's rising at a faster rate than those free news sites as well. 
So moving on from that, we want to understand and see what categories are driving this growth. So what we've done here is same thing again, the share to the industry by category. So as Gareth went through, we've split these out from entertainment down to business and politics. So the lighter line again is um, representing the share for 2017 compared to the darker line, which is 2018. What we can see is that the entertainment titles within the magazine industry dominate in terms of share. And then when we look at that year on year growth, so in the bubbles there, we can see the entertainment is growing again year on year by 7%, along with lifestyle, fashion and beauty. But actually the food and health titles have grown the most year on year by 29% for visitation. Of course, when we see some categories grow, we'll see others decline. So we can see that sport and motor, tech, and business and politics are actually declined year on year. And this is a period January to August 2017 to 2018. So now what we want to do is delve into those individual categories, see what titles are driving that growth for them. So when we look at entertainment, we can see that, um, interestingly, the top three have all grown by three digits. So we're just looking at August 2017 compared to August 2018. Interestingly, we've got WHO um, Australia, I think I'm saying that right. So that's basically telling us that Britons are looking for their entertainment um, content from international sites as well. So that's grown by quite a lot. If we look at things like lifestyle and food and health, we can see there's a lot more niche titles that are doing that same kind of three-digit growth. So we've got CSO Magazine, which is uh, cybersecurity, Dog Magazine there as well, and Diabetic Gourmet, so those much more niche kind of content magazines. And then when we go into fashion and beauty as well, we can see that there's big titles in there still growing year on year. So Glamour, for example, growing over 200% year on year. Um, and Harper's Bazaar as well. Equally, we want to look at those categories that were declining in terms of um, visitation. But within them, we can see that there are titles that are still growing. So we can see for technology, digital camera world, um, increasing by over 500% there year on year uh, for website visitation, motorsport magazine. And then we have these um, quite interesting one country specific magazine, so Philadelphia magazine and America magazine. So, moving on to audience trends. Yep. No, yep, go straight through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> what we want to do here is look at people that are visiting uh, the magazine industry. And for August 2018, we could see that 12.3 million people visited a magazine title. So, that's almost a quarter of the online population. So what we've done is further broken that down into category as well. So we can see how many visitors went to the entertainment title. So that's people. So 4.5 million people viewing a um, entertainment title online. All the way down to business, uh, which is 1.3 million visitors. When we look at this for year on year, so looking at the arrow, so this is August 2017 to 18. Uh, we can see that entertainment has grown by quite a lot there, 32% increase in share, whereas business has actually declined by 20% year on year. And it's, it's quite interesting, if we, if we match these stats with the, with, the, uh, with the visit share stats on the previous slide, you'll see that entertainment and food has grown significantly in visits and visitors. Um, which is succeed, obviously succeeding in terms of acquisition. And the sport has grown in visitors by 2%, but then declined in visit share by 10%. Um, so less engagement, but more unique users. Um, and then business has seen a drop in visit share um, and visitors. So the vertical needs to focus on mainly acquisition and retention strategies. So for any of you that done the quick maths on those individual categories, might have realised that each of them didn't actually add up to 12 point million, it was over. That's because naturally, we're not going to just visit one category, one magazine, we're going to have multiple interests. So what we've tried to delve into on this slide is looking at those audience overlaps. So see, for a fashion and beauty um, consumer, a visitor to one of those titles, where else are they going when they're online to those magazine titles? So just a few um, key pullouts here. We can see that fashion and beauty um, customers, visitors to those magazine titles, 34% of them are also visiting entertainment titles as well. 
And then when we look at it for entertainment titles, that's also the highest crossover for them. But when we look at it on a smaller scale, so business and politics, for example, we can see that there's, for the fashion and beauty um, audience, there's a 10% crossover for business and politics. So these are where we can start seeing opportunities for partnerships, et cetera. Absolutely. I'll give you a top tip for that one as well, Charlotte. Um, this chart provides top level view, right, by category. However, if you drill down to your specific publication to identify partnership opportunities, subscription opportunities, content partnerships and all these things. Cool. So because of these differing um, categories, there's obviously different top content, topics, etc. We want to understand and see what do they look like, that audience. So what we've done here is just taken some basic uh, demographic information. So what we've got here is just breaking it down by age, which age group is most likely to visit those categories. So we can see that the entertainment category is drawing in 18 to 24 year olds and 65 plus. For business and politics, we can see that they're over indexing for ages 18 up to 34. And then we can further look at this by gender as well, so seeing uh, male to female, what categories they're most likely to be visiting. And then we've further broken it down into regions so we can see whereabouts in the UK these categories are most likely to go. So um, what we're going to do now is look at those increasing visitor categories, so entertainment, food and health. And we want to delve into those audiences that are increasing this growth. So for entertainment, we can see that females age 45 plus are actually driving that 32% visitor share growth, um, most likely to be from London or the North East. And then we will look at food and health, so increasing by 31 visitor share, that's actually being driven by 55 plus males in the London Southwest area as well. Equally, we want to look at the um, kind of channel analysis and search data. So how are they getting to these categories as well? So interesting, when we look at entertainment and food and health, we can see that other print media is increased year on year for driving traffic to these categories. That means more traditional kind of um, print media sites. So this could suggest that people are going to those more traditional sites and then going through to those more niche titles to get that content. We've also broken this down into search terms, what have increased year on year, so we can see the international celebrities driving traffic to the entertainment titles, and more health foods and recipes um, driving traffic to food and health titles. I'll give you another top tip mm -hmm. with that one, Charlotte. <laughs> Behavioural data um, displayed by both clickstream and search term analysis identifies why there has been a category shift, okay? So these methods, should and could be a starting point to those online growth tactics. So what we want to look at now is those declining categories for visit share and see what demographics have actually pulled back from visiting them. So what we found um, in the Hitwise data is that for both of these categories, young males have decreased their visitation to both technology and business and politics. Slightly differing in terms of region there as well. But when we look at the clickstream data and search data, we can see that search engines for technology has decreased by over 100% in terms of driving traffic to that technology titles. Um, but across the two, we can see social media has declined a lot as well. In terms of searches, we can see that the top declining for technology is those comparison searches, so best laptops, best tablets, etc. But for business and politics, we can see international searches um, around news. I'll give you another top tip on that one, Charlotte. <laughs> um, declines do not necessarily mean less interest, OK? Rather, this audience could be going elsewhere for those searches. Um, so you can build a win-back strategy around this to reclaim that audience. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So key trends. What, do you, what, what have we learned? What have we seen so far? Online, mag online magazine industry overall has grown 9% year to date, although those percentages do vary depending on the category, as you'd expect. Entertainment, lifestyle and fashion dominate, continue to dominate, um, whereas sport and motors have grown visits, but their engagement is kind of waning a little bit. 
Entertainment, food and health is still the largest audience growth at 30% year on year. And tech and business continues to drop amongst young men. So key recommendations, what can we do? How can we help? Track changes to visits and unique visitors to guide engagement and retention strategies. Use search insights to uncover why audiences decline and learn from the competition. Understand Clickstream to better retain your audience and take share from the competitors. And get a deeper understanding of your audience's broader likes to guide partnerships and content and wider strategies. We've been Hitwise. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to us at such last minute. Um, we welcome any questions. Yeah.